So uh, I will, uh, that will come not out of my mouth, but uh, it's a definition that was provided by the ILO. Essentially, when we're talking about green jobs, we are talking about jobs that uh, through their exercise either do not contribute additionally to the stock of the greenhouse emissions or actively contribute to its reduction. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Simple. Yeah. So with that now, and then we've got this whole topic of economics and we've discussed a few things that need some major improvements, especially as the COPs are conducted. What, if you were to sum up in a few ways, what do you think we are doing wrong? When it comes to uh, green jobs, I think what we're doing wrong is first and foremost, the way we're framing it. Uh, there is a lot of talk, not only in this domain, but in general, when we talk about energy transition, about cost, uh, without uh, this debate being honest, uh, and what I mean without this debate being honest is without uh, putting as there as the counterfactual uh, the cost of an action, first and foremost, and mm -hmm. without um, presenting uh, comparable returns on investment or lack of investment in the second case. Uh, if uh, these presentations were more direct and more honest in this regard, uh, the speed of decision-making would have been much more forceful and uh, more ambitious energy transition policies would make much more common sense. Uh, apart from that, uh, this is also a loss of uh, narrative uh, without uh, an honest representation of the costs and uh, investments benefits. Uh, the advocates for strong energy transition might also lose the narrative battle, especially, and here I am referring particularly to the Western democratic societies, because uh, in uh, other societies, the context is a little bit different. This also leads to um, the hemorrhaging of uh, the working class vote and their turn towards populist challengers. Even though green jobs is actually a perfect remedy for many of the grievances that the working classes uh, in uh, the US, Europe, Australia, New Zealand uh, have been experiencing since the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, green jobs, in uh, many cases, if accounted for well in terms of educational pathways to them, they are in fact appealing to those who constituted the working class of the Easter year, mainly people who, I mean, people who have not had for various reasons ac access to high education, to, to tertiary education. And uh, those jobs, many of them, require very specific technical education, uh, which can be perfectly well achieved in uh, the vocational sector if it is A, well-resourced, B, well-propagated, C, future-proof by a strong collaboration with the private sector in terms of creating curricula, establishing uh, dual programs where people can also learn on the jobs, and D, clear pathways again, together with the corporate actors for lifelong learning. Because uh, in green jobs, like in any other jobs of today and tomorrow, people will change their careers quite often. To illustrate what I mean by this example that it is specifically would be affecting the working class constituencies and the constituencies of people who haven't had access to higher education, I would like to come back to Germany again. Uh, we, for example, Look at what is happening right now at uh, in uh, their like energy market in general. People are anticipating that the uh, Russian gas may soon dry out, and uh, many want to change. Uh, many households want to change from gas boilers to heat pumps, but installing them requires a certain amount of skilled technicians, and so. They are just not there, even though they, German, even though German government significantly relaxed its immigration rules for certain categories of workers, including from those outside of the EU. Uh, so, in many cases, uh, for some very unsexy interventions on the one hand, but uh, extremely e efficient on the other, when it comes to climate action, emission reduction, and so on, the problem is not that technologies are not yet there, or that. Uh, they are too costly. 
but uh, the f simple fact that uh, there are unfortunately not enough qualified people to take on those jobs and uh, to drive those businesses forward. And if this is a shortage that is manifesting itself already now, imagine what will happen if we are 10 years from now and we have still no clear working strategies uh, on this front and we are in the middle of an energy transition. Mm. So would you say like overall, and this is a loaded question, so really what I'm getting out of this, and this is simplifying it, we're not overall ready for a full-fledged energy transition to green energies 